And now it's time for a little poetry reading, courteous of GrabTech RC. WTFPV. Birdie birdie in the sky, why'd you drop that in my eye? I won't sigh, I won't cry, I'm only glad that cows don't fly. <laughs> Another day, another frame. Today we're taking a look at this WTFPV. This came from GrabTech RC. It's part of their Flynoceros line of quadcopters. Which, and what does that mean? It means it comes with a lifetime warranty. If you break it, they replace it. So here are all the pieces laid out. And this really does come with a lifetime warranty. And a lot of the details are out on their website. And you can, ha uh, you can read through the FAQ if you want. And they have a lot of information about uh, what they cover and how to claim your warranty if you have any problems. Anyway, this is the FTP, WTFPV quadcopter, and this is the top plate, and just looking at how thick this is, it's probably two millimeters or three, but I mean, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this, and it's not bending hardly at all. I'm actually pretty impressed with this. I'm going to start getting this thing assembled. So here's the frame fully assembled, and you can tell there is some major beef on this quadcopter. These arms are thick, these plates are thick. Now down here it's kind of nice, they made this bottom plate here, which is probably just a reinforcement plate, but they made it so you can slip your battery strap through here without interfering with your um, flight board. Even if you stack your flight board up here, even with some little rubber flat, or flat rubber washers, and it sits flat on the board, you can still fit your battery strap through the middle because you have plenty of room. Also, these camera mounts are extremely thick for being camera mounts, which is very surprising. Uh, back here on the back, you can see it has some uh, holes in here for mounting your video transmitter inside here. So you can still see the uh, screen and it has the little straps that go around it. Hopefully you can use those for zip ties or whatever else you need to. Back here on the back, it has a hole for your antenna mount. And then if you run your um, power distribution board and you run your wire up, you can run it through this little hole here to uh, run, your, run your battery up on top. And you have battery strap holders up here just as well for the um, for the battery. Now the only thing that I saw kind of initially about this frame is that they give you uh, eight of these little screws and they give you a whole bunch of long ones. The longer ones are for the arms and the shorter ones are for up here. But on this back plate, because you have this extra plate with the uh, antenna holder and the wire holder, this little screw barely gets any threads into, there we go, barely gets any threads into the uh, into the spacer. Now it's probably going to be fine, but what I'd, I'd really like to have seen two more longer screws come up here that would also be that would be included and you could use these two short ones if you didn't use the plate or the two longer ones if you did use the plate. The whole frame went together very easily. There's all the holes lined up exactly like they're supposed to, which is <laughs> very nice because a lot of the cheaper frames don't don't line up quite like they're supposed to. Also, you can see inside here there's four there are two sets of holes for two different sizes of flight boards. Now a lot of the flight boards in the past have been like 35-ish millimeters by 35, and the newer ones are actually gonna be a little smaller, and they still have all the same functionality as the larger ones. So I'm kind of excited to see what those, what, you know, what kind of uh, boards people start to make. Also back here on the back, it has the same kind of hole design back here with the two strap holders or battery strap, or battery zip tie uh, holders where you can run zip ties through there. So this is, this, is, this frame is pretty nice. Here's my caliper. I'll go ahead and make sure it's zeroed and it is. All right, these arms here are four millimeters thick. Holy cow. Okay, this top plate comes in at two and a half millimeters. I was guessing two or three. That's not too bad. The uh, main plate down here on the bottom is two and a half. Also, the lower plate down below looks like it's probably also two and a half. Yep, also two and a half. And these spacers up here in the front. If we measure these, they are uh, 35 millimeter spacers. So if you wanted to get some knurled spacers or some different colored ones, you could do that. These are just smooth spacers. There's nothing too special about those. Uh, the, the outer holes in here inside the flight board are 31 millimeters. I said 35 earlier. It's just 31 millimeters. Uh, let's see, these closer holes here look like they're about 20 millimeters. So you have 20 millimeters and 31 millimeter hole spacing. And there's also the wires, uh, the hole here in the bottom. So if you want to run wires down to the bottom for LEDs or something, you have that option. There's a little bit of give and take when it comes to speed of your quadcopter and durability of your quadcopter. It's kind of like you can't really have both in too many frames. Now this one is designed to have thick arms. 
Now what does that mean? It means that when this thing crashes, you're probably not gonna break anything on this frame. You're gonna probably break uh, propellers that are hanging off of it. Maybe your motors if you hit the concrete wall or a brick wall or something. But the durability of this frame is gonna be uh, you know, enormous. Now the speed of this frame is going to be a little less just because of it, just because it's a little bit more massive. It has the eight spacers in here, where some of the um, smaller racers have four spacers. But again, this one is built for durability. It has a lifetime warranty, so it's not going to break quite as easily. I did have an ET200, which weighed about 45 grams and spun five-inch props, and the thing was like lightning. It would all it would go so fast. The only problem was anytime you hit anything, you broke arms and you were pretty much sitting out the rest of the day waiting you know, because your quad's broken. Now before I weigh this one, I was going to show you. This is an uh, X210. This is a 3 millimeter plate. You can probably see a little bit of difference. It also only has four spacers, but it has a little bit more carbon fiber. It also has a battery strap and a little battery protector and a power distribution board included in it. Now if I put this on a scale, get the balance on here. This one comes in about... 90.6 grams and that's not too heavy of a frame it's a little bit heavier than than probably some of the other ones that are out there but 90.6 grams isn't really bad and especially for a three millimeter plate now this WTFPV quadcopter if I get this on the scale here this one's gonna weigh a little bit more let me flip it over this way so it stays on the scale it comes in about hundred and forty nine grams now the this thing so this thing weighs essentially 60 grams more than the X210 but what does that mean? That means that this thing's not gonna break when it goes into a crash and starts spinning around. What else does that mean? Chances of you winning a race against somebody with a, you know, a 70 gram or a 80 gram quadcopter with equal uh, skill as you, you're probably gonna have a little bit harder time beating them. So you're, so you're best off if you're using this frame as a spec frame, which is actually what they actually designed it for. This is a WTF. WTFPV edition final spec frame. So if you're racing against other people who have frames, the same frame, then you're actually comparing your skill versus skill and you're not gonna get destroyed because somebody has a real light quadcopter and you're flying a tank. So here I have the ruler lined up and if I come across here to the other side, you can see it comes in about 234, 233 millimeters more or less. Now this quadcopter, you gotta remember, this thing is built for durability and speed is a secondary issue because this is supposed to be a spec frame where it's racing against other quadcopters of similar size and weight. So here's the WTF PV frame and this is the uh, real ACC X210 frame. And you can see they look really close to the same. If you saw these sitting on a starting line getting ready to take off, it'd be hard to tell much of a difference between the uh, sizes. Now you can also see this body here is long, whereas this one is pretty small. Let me go ahead and measure this real quick because I hadn't done that yet. And this thing comes out to be about 140 millimeters from front to back. And from side to side here is about, what's that, four and a half millimeters, 45 millimeters, 47 millimeters. I got a little bit extra on the ruler. 47 millimeters. So this is, like I said, this is designed to be a heavy duty frame and it's designed to be a spec racer. So here's a prop that's seen better days, but it has no problem clearing the frame here in the back and also up here in the front. Uh, it ha again, it has no problem uh, clearing these spacers at all. Even coming up, there's no, there's no part of the propeller going underneath the frame. So if you keep, as long as you keep all the electronics tucked inside the frame underneath the main plate, you should be fine in terms of keeping it out of the propellers. So this is the WTFPV quadcopter frame from GrabTech RC. This frame looks like it would be very, very hard to break. But even if you did, who cares? It's under warranty. Send it in. They send you a new frame. If you break just the top plate, send the whole thing in. They send you a new frame. Uh, if they don't have the same frame available or new ones available, you'll get a free upgrade. Anyway, if you have any questions about this you can uh, that you think GrabTech RC needs to answer, you can contact them through their website. And they are really good about getting back to you. And they're also a good group of guys who are very, very, very interested in quadcopters and making the best frames that they can. Anyway, if you have any questions about this for me, leave them in the comments. I will try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching. Something else for all you guys at 3D printers, here are some Rotor Riot gimbal guards. You put these on your Tyrannus sticks like this on your gimbals or on your Spectrum. They actually fit a couple Spectrums that I tried. And then when you're traveling in the car, if somebody drops something on this, the chances of it breaking off your sticks are a lot less. 
Anyway, shout out to the guy who made this. I'll put links to this down in the description. If you got a 3D printer, print them off yourself. I'm not doing it for you. <laughs>